Hello. <laughs> Joel, baby, it's Matt. How are you doing? Good. Are you recording this phone call? Absolutely not. Hey, listen, um, I was wondering, did you want to get some coffee with me? You know how I love frequent urination? <laughs> oh, perfect. I wanted to watch this Seinfeld thing together, and uh, I'll bring over some fancy coffees for us. Sounds good. See you in a minute. All right. Bye-bye now. I, lo I love this staged phone call. Hello? Ricky. Who's that? Jerry. Oh, hi, man. How's it going? What are you doing? Oh, sitting here. I think I've got irritable bowel syndrome. Oh, gosh. That is irritating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to grab a coffee? Keep yeah. Raised. Have you seen any of these that you like? I've never seen an episode. Oh, wow. I try not to watch any... Uh, any television shows or movies because the media is poison. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big reader of books, yeah. which is why I'm a great host for this movie podcast. Yeah, because uh, so many movies are based on books. Yeah, I like the real thing. I like the details. I like to project my own movie in the cinema of my mind. And you know what? Modern media just doesn't do it for me. <laughs> like, what's a great movie? Drive? We're going to put a beautiful man in a beautiful jacket, then he's going to kill people while some synth pop plays. Oh, man. And then also the turn in that movie where uh, they're playing that synth pop and he's like murdering a guy in an elevator and There's making a girl watch. Inside you <laughs> that's hard to explain. Yeah, we're not going to like that one in uh, a good 20 years. Yeah, uh, no, I don't I, think it's going to stand I the test I think of time. we will. I think I think Drive's going to... You know, I had a friend who worked <laughs> in Is the... Is this mine before we Yeah, uh, I, I drank mine already. I was raised to be a great coffee addict, Matt Anderson. Listen, uh, listen to the... You already popped the top on this one. No, I didn't. You Did probably... It comes from the bodega like that. <laughs> 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 it comes with real New York cat piss. Mm. You can taste the cat. It's in there. That's good stuff. Okay, um, this episode so sponsored by <laughs> Frappuccino Starbucks pre-packaged. Yeah, I told Matt to get me a fancy iced coffee. He shows up with Starbucks like a real fucking Midwesterner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about artisanal <laughs> cold brew, my friend. You show up with this soccer mom shit. You don't understand. I'm a world class coffee snob. You want me to go twelve <laughs> blocks instead of two, didn't you? You see that on the table? Wait, wait, wait. You see that little black vial? Yeah, I do. I'm such a coffee snob. You, have you heard of the bulletproof coffee trend? No. It's where you like um you blend coffee with your with a little coconut oil or unsalted butter, and the fat is absorbed into the coffee. <laughs> you can it's a meal replacement. The caffeine hits you a little better, and you also don't have that like big drop off at the end. That vial is my own bulletproof compound. So I'm such a coffee snob. I walk to the coffee shop each morning. I order a bulletproof coffee and then I make them with, make, use my own mixture that I bring. That's that's a far. That's a few two steps far for me. Yeah, you don't. It, it's delicious <laughs> though. It's the best stuff you've ever tasted. My sister makes it. Yeah. Yeah. It's got coconut oil, uh, maca. So how do you how do you rehydrate it? You just add boiling water to it. No, no, you don't do it. You have like a regular cup of coffee. You put it in the blender. Then you put a tablespoon of this stuff in it, and then you blend it for just a second. Yeah. And that it, that force is enough to distribute the fats throughout the coffee. Mm -hmm. And it has a smoky flavor. It's got a nice head on the top of it that's okay. like similar to a beer or like a like 10 times what an espresso head would be. So could you take it camping with you and you just like kind of stir it in a little bit? Yeah, you absolutely could. You would. You kind of need the blender to do it like... Do I just, right. Yeah, I just visited the uh, archipelago of Cuba, and uh, <laughs> well, it's not an island because it's formed by volcanic uh, rock being distributed over time. And my biggest regret about the Cuba trip was not bringing any bulletproof coffee compound. Yeah, they would have thought those were drugs, though. No, they wouldn't. I brought so much weed. Like they would have been like, that's an extract of heroin, <laughs> you know, and it's hair gel. <laughs> like, oh, I, they would. No way. They would try to stop you somehow. No, you could, there it there is no laws in the world. I I flew to Cuba with so much weed. I found more weed that was just <laughs> in my luggage. <laughs> and the best part about going to a, like a third world communist country is bringing a a vape pen cuz everyone will just think you're like some kind of a wizard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like a like a 
playboy billionaire type of thing to do. True. No, I was like the most famous person in Cuba. You can't hear this on the pod, but I'm like, I'm a little handsome and I've, my body is just like very big and muscular. So people would stop <laughs> me on the street and make me do push ups. It was the be- <laughs> it was everything I've ever wanted. <laughs> hey, you you uh do the push ups. They just say that. Yeah, no, this no, like they would always just like slap my muscle and be like, Oh, you're strong. <laughs> and Jesus like Christ. That's how I like to be communicated with. Wow. So I, I, w- I was like, Oh, me strong. Yeah. <laughs> what a, what an ego boost. And, like, I really don't need help. Like, you see, I'm not lacking for cof- confidence. Right. I'm bringing my own bulletproof <laughs> coffee yeah. compound. Yeah. Hey, I know you spent thousands of dollars opening this coffee business and are, like, an artisan of this profession. But I know it just a little better than you. <laughs> uh, I am. I, it's, it, it's good to be. I think we have a good rapport for this podcast. Because you're you're just you were an Eagle Scout, right? You're a great young man. Yeah, yeah. I was a up studious young man. Uh, both of his parents still alive, loved me. The youngest of three children, Eagle it, Scout. Are, are you together? Are, are your parents <laughs> me, together? Me, my pa- me, my dad, and my mom. We're all still together. <laughs> the family unit is intact. Yeah, I mean, you seem like you were molested, but it got like very serious. Like, you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The kid's like, can we move in together? Yeah, it happened before, you know, I could bury it, you know, because it happened at such a young age. And in contrast to Matt's, like, lifetime of service, his uh, solid upbringing, I am actually the devil. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, you you came up in the Midwest as well. You just... um had a different upbringing. <laughs> no, I had a great upbringing. My parents, my mom's like a special ed teacher. My yeah. dad's like the sweetest man in the world. I've just always been a little, a saucy little shit bag. <laughs> <laughs> You're just out there trying to get attention, huh? Yeah, it's Monday morning and like Matt comes in at 11 a.m. He's like, like, my problems are, oh, I just had to pay my bookie $400. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm home recovering from, from knee surgery. And uh, <laughs> the doctor says, don't make any financial institutions. So I bet on basketball games, <laughs> and I lost 15 basketball games. In a row. In a row. Yeah, so just for a little perspective, if you would have bet that you would have won 15 basketball games in a row, you would be you wouldn't have to work again. That's like... Well, that if you roll it over the That's right way. That's what I'm saying. But this is just like fifty dollars a bet, right? So I went from being up. Somebody should just do the opposite of what you do, and they would have like a ninety percentile betting, you know, reputation. Yeah, and this is with a real bookie, not like an offshore people. So I can't even call my credit card company and be like, "Yo, I don't know what this is." <laughs> Yeah, one of the people who works for me took my oh, credit card. Jesus Christ. That's March Madness. Uh, Absolutely. And I do f- all college basketball, right? It is all NBA. I don't I don't do that college stuff. It's too Really? No, wow. the end of the games is too fuzzy and like basketball is the hardest sport to bet on, but I I'm convinced I know it a little better than everyone else. <laughs> I, it's, it seems like you might be getting a little too cute for yourself with your bets. No, nah, you know? they were all solid. I, I, the thing is, I stand behind every decision of these ga- of these bets I made. Well, <laughs> I mean, it just Detro- sucks when it doesn't line up for you. Detroit. When you go- should beat Orlando. San Antonio should beat Los Angeles. Oklahoma yeah. City should beat Dallas. But were you reading into, you know, which players ate what for breakfast? No, you I know? Would, like I that's would, what basketball no, is all about. The one, the one thing I was doing is I was looking at um the the schedule. Like I, I bet rest and I bet road. Mm-hmm. And I'm betting teams with something to play for versus teams that are tanking. Yeah. And this was just Brutal week. I was just in a coding haze <laughs> doing a puzzle, then like oh, stumbling away from my puzzle and How losing copy. <laughs> is a puzzle after you lose, you know, 400 bucks. It's pretty good, actually. <laughs> really? 
Yeah, because you're just trying to pick up the pieces anyway. <laughs> It's an analogy. <laughs> no, my my life for the past week, I sleep till noon. Yeah. I do my puzzle for about six hours. Yeah. And the it, doctor prescribed that puzzle? Uh, no, my friend Jake, who wanted to kill me, gave me like a thousand piece panoramic puzzle. Mm-hmm. And I'm absolutely sitting around the house losing my mind. <laughs> do you think he stole the last piece? I, I Dude, I... I that's spent a, that's like all a strategy. Week, dude, I spent all week doing the field mm-hmm. and I'm missing one piece of the field. <laughs> I know you're you're a little bit more able-bodied than me. I want you to look at that puzzle and tell me what a good job I've done. Let's see here. Um, you know, you've had about a week. Oh yeah, you can see that uh the the it's a football field. It's it coming is together. a football field. Um, but holy shit, look at all that blue. That looks awful. Yeah, that's just like that's fans? extremely far out fan. <laughs> it's a puzzle with no detail in it whatsoever. Yeah. It's basically it's like an out of out of a focus photograph. Yeah, I've, <laughs> where I, nothing will match. I know by by the time I do this, I will be completely healed. <laughs> um, yeah, we were supposed to talk about something today. Yeah. No, I don't mind uh, venturing into the uh, gambling world. Because the gambling world, the coding world. Yeah. I need a job. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, once you get more money, those bets are just going to make you more money. Yeah, I'm going I'm to I'm start winning it back starting tonight. You, who do you got tonight? Um, This t- is, uh, <laughs> what what day is it? It's uh, 3-12 or 3-5. <laughs> tonight tonight is kind of shameful, actually. Yeah. I did the unthinkable. What did you did you do a parlay? No, I didn't do a. I bet against my own beloved Detroit Pistons. Oh boy. Yeah, I thought I was trying to win my money back, mm-hmm. but I didn't. My my bookie hit me up. He's like, "Yeah, it's Monday morning. You're up. You're due." So I bet I took I took the Cavs over the Pistons because it's minus six. Cleveland's lost two in a row. Yeah, I've historically lost so much money on the Cavs. Like. They were also responsible for the Martin Luther King massacre of last <laughs> year. <laughs> oh, we all remember that hitting your wallets. <laughs> that, no, that was I, I was in, I, uh, I went out to Vegas. The Facebook statuses. Man, going to Vegas is sick. Uh, I went out for a divisional round because I and I was up quite a bit. I bet like three hundred dollars on each divisional game. Hung out with my man, the Gallop and Gowden Apu. Yeah, uh, richest man in the world, actually. Um, no, that's my best friend Apu Gounded. But we went out there. I broke even <laughs> to the games, and then Monday, Monday, it's Martin Luther King Day, so they have NBA games. Yep. So I'm betting on the NBA games, and I took the Cavs against the Warriors. On the road with eight and a half points, the Cavs get blown out. Uh, so I decide I'm going to win my money back at the, with the second half line. So I throw down big on the second half line, and they got blown knowing out. that the Cavs they're the defending champions. They'll 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 stand up for themselves a little bit. And um, it was a statement game. And then they just collapsed. They <laughs> lost by thirty. The, the team was the roster was broken. They didn't know it yet, and I went home empty-handed. Yeah. Your little pee pee in your hand, with my little pee. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't. I haven't made money or lost money gambling like that in a while. It sounds pretty exhilarating. I both made and lost, but but on the NBA playoffs last year, like I did well enough that my girlfriend, the beautiful Gabby Garcia, and I, we went on a Mexican vacation together. <laughs> so I mean, it's not all bad. You're up. You probably. Still. Yeah, I think I'm up all time quite a bit, but yeah, rough couple days. Yeah. Um. So this week we uh, decided on watching. I'm telling you for the last time, the Seinfeld special. No, tell me what we're watching. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Seinfeld special from 20 years ago. What are we watching? Um, I'm telling you for the last time. But what are we watching? Um, <laughs> Joel, I'm telling you for the last time. I'm telling what you for are the last we? Time. <laughs> we watched an extremely dated, yeah, an extremely, I dare say, phoned in special, yeah, by the great in quotes Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Um, but you, you know what? We're twenty years out, and 
Curb Your Enthusiasm it pro- is probably like the best sitcom of this generation of television. Yeah. I would say that or Broad City without getting into like. Yeah. two. Di- I mean, different strokes, but yeah, I would agree with you. Like those are two good, different voices in sitcoms. Yeah. So they're up there with like Parks and Rec in the office, probably mm-hmm. Modern Family, which isn't my cup of tea. But like given the run of Curb Your Enthusiasm, how much has Seinfeld's stock been hit with that? Like, Larry David was clearly such an important voice in that show. Oh, yeah. Um, it, I mean, I had a lot of nostalgia for this because, like, this is one of the earliest comedy specials that I can remember. And there was, like, specific bits that, like, hit me right in the heart. I was like, oh, You know, like, the careful horses out there, you know, when they're all just, at the end of the day, going for the same bag of oats. Oat bag, oat bag, gotta get my oat bag. Yeah, but, like, there's some stuff that was, like, really corny. And then, like, the sketch at the beginning was kind of funny, but at the same time, they just kind of overplayed it. This was a theatrical release? This was the uh, Netflix, what I think it is the theatrical release. But this was released in theaters, correct? So for those, we haven't really set it up. For those of you who don't know, Jerry Seinfeld is an American comedian, creator of the show Seinfeld in 1998. The year this podcast focuses on, um, <laughs> yeah, he was at the you. he was at the height of his powers, right? Seinfeld yeah. went on the off the air in ninety seven, I believe. Yeah. So this is people. The appetite for Seinfeld was extremely high. Yeah, and he was able to theatrically release an hour of stand up. So at the beginning, he has this sketch that is every comedian celebrity cameo that you can possibly yeah. have. Yeah, you've got Carlin. You've got um, Richard Lewis. Yeah. Who who else? There was George Wallace. <laughs> yeah, George Wallace was there. I liked what they did with George Wallace, but we'll circle back was to it. Colin Quinn there. I think Colin Quinn was there. Jay Leno, Jay Richard Leno. Belzer. Um, yeah. No, David Letterman. I would have remembered that. But like it was, it was the who's who of just Gary comedian. Shandling, and they they all had little bits. Yeah, like somebody stole one of his bits out of the his coffin. Yeah, that was Gary Shandling. He's like, I got nothing on this. <laughs> but like the whole idea was like he's putting all his material down to die, and he's like he was gonna quit stand up and burn all the material, which is like kind of uh, what you're supposed to do. But he was just making a big show of it. Yeah. I, I did like um, George Wallace. Like he's a great comic, and like you know, he's he's a he's a gay guy. It's not like very well known, but he is. But they had a winking nod to it at the end of the open, where George Wallace is like, "Yeah, he's circumcised." Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> so I thought that was a really cute one. Yeah, because like you could really see the friendships in some of them, like on. St- in as captured yeah like yeah. you could see that like what kind of bits they would prepare together you know it seemed very much like those two people goofing and those were all these standouts which is probably why letterman wasn't included like well it's also like and very nbc heavy at the time but like yeah you know it's all the the tried and true very material heavy not so formalist comedians the 80s club guys who did well for themselves yeah so I thought the open was pretty good and like, but I don't know if I'm going to the theater in 1998, I don't know if that, um, if that open is enough to quench my, it, does, does that, is that worth $7 and 50 cents? He, uh, he scolds a kid at the beginning, right before he gets in too. He's like, he says the uh, name of the album. I'm telling you for the last time. Yeah. No, what happens is I was like, oh, okay, the, the, the wind hits in the cemetery and a piece of material blows <laughs> into the wind like the feather from Forrest Gump. Yeah, very uh, CGI. And it funny. goes into the air and it's found by a, a, a kid who looks a lot like a young Jerry Seinfeld. And he's like <laughs> on a New York City street in 1998, but for some reason he looks like he's from the 50s. Yeah, he's wearing a Newsies cap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he he's, looks impoverished. <laughs> He, he, he's outing a communist <laughs> and uh, talking about how the lunch counters yeah. need to be segregated. <laughs> and then he finds this piece of material 
and he gives it to Simon. No, but I think every kid looks like they're from the 1950s if you put them in a horizontal striped shirt. Oh, 100%. Yeah, put them uh, on their bottom on a beach and just <laughs> put them in a horizontal striped shirt. Maybe- hey, mister! <laughs> Comb up their blonde hair. No, he was he was a brunette because he, he looked like Seinfeld. And they have this they have this little moment outside the theater on the sidewalk, and then like again they have to spend money because this is being released in the theaters. For some reason, there's like a huge opulent crane shot. <laughs> you can see that the city, the city street is shut down, and I feel bad for like I know it was probably the traffic easy. of the day. Yeah. It was probably easy to get to get around because we still had our freedom in this town. Uh, <laughs> That's right. We had three more solid years left of freedom. Um, yeah, we had yet to turn into a, a corporate fueled police state. <laughs> but um, you can see the camera goes up to the marquee for the theater. It says Jerry Seinfeld. I'm telling you for the rest of the last time. And above it is a picture. From behind of Seinfeld doing stand up, and the camera goes into the shot, and you, you could tell it's gonna be like a sick transition. Yeah. Of like Seinfeld in the poster to Seinfeld standing there, and then they go in for this transition, and then they just dissolve. Yeah. <laughs> like and then they he walks to- out. That would have been a sick transition if they did go for it. Yeah. And I, like they were really suggesting like this kind of gaudy over the top thing because everything was so. Big to that point. Produced you have, you have huge everything. celebrities. You've yeah. got all this production value. You've yeah. got a crane. You've got a street <laughs> shut down. But at the and same that's time, gonna, that's going to lead <laughs> to a cross dissolve. Are you <laughs> kidding me, man? Oh fuck! I hit my damn knee again. Hey, he's so excited. I was going to say at the same time, it did kind of feel like very high school uh, video production team level. You know, like the up angle at the the casket was a little oldy time. It just all felt old, that entire sketch. And then you get into the theater, and Jerry <laughs> Seinfeld does one hour exactly of yeah. material. <laughs> he didn't give the distributors any more than they asked for. That's right. He didn't riff whatsoever. What about the encore, where he just comes back out and waves, and then he doesn't do another joke, right? I didn't watch the encore. I turned okay. it off. I, I watched it pretty late last night. I wanted to get back to my uh, books. <laughs> You're thinking man books? Yeah. Um, you can. I'm just going to pull it up real fast. Yeah, I'm going to pull so. my notes from across the room. Okay. So you got to aim the shower head at the hair. This is his uh, final bit. That never works. You got to get a pool of water from under the shower and over to the hair. <laughs> you point at your head. Get it down a foot at a time like this. The hair is hanging on. This is like his uh, closing. But we have to fight these battles. So. We're all alone in the bathroom. Whatever goes wrong, you have to Can we go back? It. What what joke does you he open on? You go to a big on? party, go in the bathroom, flush the toilet, and the water starts coming remember. up. I guarantee you This can't. is the most frightening moment in the life of a human being. You'll do anything to stop this. It's got to be You'll lose your like mind start talking to the toilet. No, please, don't do this to me. Oh, you know what no, he talked about? Like, <laughs> you know what he opened on? He job immediately. <laughs> he opened on a bit about how cabbies <laughs> smell. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> It's good to be back in the new, so here in New York, <laughs> where all the cabbies smell like shit. Yeah, he <laughs> said he does that. I wouldn't do that in my car. They got the cherry bio. I remember that bit. All right, so he's getting a standing ovation. He comes back out, right? And, you and know he what? doesn't do a bit. He got a standing O when he came out too. Right. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like. Some people are like, do we got to be doing this? They begrudgingly stand out. Look at this. The only person before this who gets a standing O when they come out is Kevin Klein in in and out I don't even remember that movie. He's like... You uh, didn't cover that in 1997? No, I didn't get to everything. What are you, a bigot? <laughs> I think so. Oh, yeah, and then they had a closing... Uh, who are funeral. the Paul Bears? Those aren't oh, those aren't even the comics. Those are stand-ins. Yeah, they couldn't stick around <laughs> to like 
get this one shot. Yeah. Who would want that fucking job anyway? You know, you're like talent. You're like, oh, I have to lower a goddamn casket five times because the director didn't get the correct angle or whatever. That would be rough. Oh, you wanted to see his first joke, you said, or not? I really? remember that it was the B.O. one. I mean, overall, hey, I looked up. I, I think it's a one note type of deal. I looked up. I looked up the director, mm -hmm. and in the in <laughs> the first result for him is you can go to Vimeo and you can watch a tape of his seventieth birthday party. <laughs> Vimeo. Yeah, guys, everyone go to uh, Vimeo.com and watch Marty Callner's 70th birthday party. Are you talking about Vimeo or the Thank you. Vimeo? Thank you. Yeah, that Vimeo. Very, very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> we'll only play a little bit more of this. Standing ovation. Now I know there's always a... Excuse me? <laughs> Perfect start, sure. Thank you. <laughs> oh, someone hit someone with the baba buoy. I audience to give a standing ovation. There's always a few people that don't really want to do it. <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend's play got a standing o last night. Oh, and hey. you just like looked like Are a grouch. Yeah, I did. I was I had my crutches, so I couldn't give it a standing o. <laughs> that was his first joke. We gonna do this? That was just standard crowd work. Yeah. All right. I got him now. Uh, so cabbies smell like shit. Also, uh, what's, what's with their the, names? What's with the letters in their last name? <laughs> you gotta have a periodic table to read some of these names. This guy got boron in his name. <laughs> I mean, this other dude got boron in his act. What up, dog? <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Seinfeld, you bitch. <laughs> yeah, like the, Seinfeld does a joke in this special where he's it's. The worst shit I've ever heard in my life. I like Seinfeld, but <laughs> <laughs> but he says I'm a single guy. I'm not. I don't have any other guys attached to me. Oh wow, that's a that's an unforgivable joke. Yeah, oh, I also noticed in this um in this special <laughs> at the very open, there's that scene in the cemetery. Yeah. So he, I noticed it wasn't a Jewish cemetery. Oh. So do you think this is Seinfeld's way of letting us know, hey, underneath these polo shirts and beneath these sneakers, I got a lot of tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I I fucking I was I was in Cu <laughs> I was in Cuba last week, and I was at one with my girlfriend, the beautiful Gabby Garcia. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you're really making up for this gambling stuff. No, she is she is the best. Um, <laughs> but she she brought her friend, a couple of her friends, like when they stayed with us, and they're like. These guys are a little younger. They're like drunks, and they're like, "We want to get tattoos." Yeah, so, no, 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 no. So they went out in Cuba with our Cuban friend Tito. Shouts to Tito. I hope you can listen to this when you get the internet. Um, <laughs> and they went out to get tattoos, uh. and I went with them. And every tattoo artist, like they would be like talk seriously, but like, yeah, we want the designs. They ended up getting like some Cuban tribal god, which is like. Mm. But I, I asked every tattoo <laughs> artist, like, hey, uh, can you do Garfield? <laughs> <laughs> what do they say? I said, sure. I thought it'd be so funny if I'd be like, yeah, I got a tattoo in Cuba. And everyone would be like, what is it? And they'd be thinking like, God, I hope it isn't some Cuban god and just a horribly appropriate circumstance. But I'd be like, yeah, I got this tattoo in Cuba. It's Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Yeah, so uh, you should get Garfield holding a knife, you know, and have him have him be in a, uh, like a very adult situation. <laughs> Big Garfield all across my chest. <laughs> <laughs> I want a Garfield. Big letters. <laughs> they wouldn't let you get that tattoo. I w I was reading about Coco the <laughs> signing gorilla. Yeah, <laughs> like when Rob <laughs> when Rob Williams died. She was upset. Wow. Yeah. She said, I'm sad that Robin Williams is dead, or was it like banana related and somebody just manipulated the data? I think they told something. Well, she was probably sad. She probably thought Robin Williams was related to her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Coco had a cat without a tail called, and she named it All Ball. Uh huh. And I I got into this because someone posted on Twitter yesterday that like Coco said. Someone asked Coco like. What happened? Where do you go when you die? And she said she just went into the bye-bye hole. <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't trust any animals that they're saying are like near human intelligence. I wouldn't like that at one bit. Well, you could tell. Well, she's not of near human intelligence. Well, she, she was she's sad. Si- Robin Williams she's died. Sad Robin <laughs> Williams died. That's more empathy than some psychopath. No, if she, you know, if there's she's people sad- in prison right now who like only kill and they they don't get sad at anything. And you telling me the signing gorilla can tell you that it's sad? Absolutely. I mean, but seriously, she said Robin Williams died. What is she for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she hasn't seen any of his, late, his late movies lately. Imagine you know? like, Night at the museum. Ugh. Imagine like getting a doctorate in zoology, then having to translate flubber for a gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so they could just sign movies to her while she's watching like the words i mean i'm just riffing here kid. this is <laughs> I, i'm like asking all these like big time questions so wait the gorilla all right no they had to hire one of those hand talkers for deaf people <laughs> uh what's the word for them <laughs> <laughs> cut that out uh, cut that out cut it out cut that cut out, it the out you. <laughs> don't put that in there all right uh, but it it's was okay. Funny. I can say that I'm gay and retarded. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, let's uh, let's go back to I'm telling you for the last time again. Did you have a favorite joke? I mean, overall, I think both of us kind of struggled to get through this because I didn't really struggle. I, I watched this in one watch. Yeah, but did it make you laugh? Um, Wait, let's let's take the viewers through uh, where we were at when we were watching it. Were you right here on the couch? No, I finished the Oscars. Mm-hmm. And I retired to my <laughs> boudoir, and the beautiful Gabby Garcia was laying beside me, posting real estate listings and interrupting me by trying to get me to move in with her in the West Village. Oh wow! That what a step, though. Yeah, I can't. I'm not. I can't afford that. How much is that? Uh, you gotta win sixty NBA bets a month to live there. <laughs> 60 times 50 that's three thousand dollars it's like 2500 for like some good one bedrooms over there it's wow. not terrible actually that isn't terrible and if i wasn't a stumbly wumbly at the moment i would consider making the move yeah did you have a favorite bit from this i had an overall impression my biggest takeaway <laughs> is that seinfeld had too much money like he he's so far disconnected from the common man he becomes like almost childlike again and in yeah, a, and in a childlike sense, he just keeps bringing up farm animals. <laughs> there were th- three separate cow jokes, two right. horse jokes. Yep, and we're looking at for like an hour set. About a quarter of it was farm animal related. It's yeah. not like these were related to like. It's not like he did like one big cow chunk. His yeah. other bits kept circling back. To cows and right. horses. Yeah, and you were saying like he has this childlike wonder. He's talking about like his childhood specifically getting candy costumes, you know, weight up versus weight down. It's all this like very uh observational, like, uh, you know, Jerry Seinfeld style. Yeah, and also like this is after he sold the syndication rights for Seinfeld. So he had the audacity to do a bit about sitting on the other side of the first class curtain. Yeah, what a bitch. Like, dog, I understand you want to be relatable, but at the same yeah. time, do not deny that you are wearing a suit on stage at Broadway in front of a sold out crowd. Right. Like that went over my head. Well, you, the thing he probably you, wrote the joke 10 years ago or whatever, you know, but it doesn't matter now because now you're, you're catching that. You're like, you, you're you the fucking hoity tighty on the other side. Well, he is kind of like the poster boy for like 80s comedy. He's the one who did it best, got the furthest with it. It was the most lucrative. So you see him like right out, right out of the bit like, yeah, you know how Louis or Chappelle, like when they drop a special, like they'll Chappelle will like, I got a riff on assault in Hollywood. When Louis was kind of the guy. He was like, 
you know, I got to seem like more of a man. I'm going to talk about my wife and my daughters. So this is 98. Seinfeld has the crown for stand-up at this moment. Like, it's between him and Rock for late 90s. So he's yeah. got to come out, prove himself by doing a bit about air travel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, I mean, all of this stuff is, you know, more or less, it's like it's the same thing over and over again. Like, I remember loving it as a kid, but the, you know, this time through, there's like five or six jokes that I remember that I really like. Yeah. No, but like his first bit is funny. It's about feeling safe at airports. And how easy it is to get a weapon on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine like yeah, Osama bin Laden, because he loved American culture. <laughs> so he's sitting there he's and watching he's, and he's, he's in his cave drinking out, Mountain Dew, watching with internet his life, porn. You know? and he's like, Abdullah, <laughs> let's watch Jerry Seinfeld. I don't want to plan attack anymore. And then he puts it on, and yeah. then Seinfeld's talking about, it's remarkably he's... easy yeah. to get a weapon on an airplane. Not before mocking people with weird names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people that don't have an English-sounding name, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, he makes... He make, he makes foreigners feel bad and they <laughs> tells them how to attack this guy. He even points out that you can bring a razor blade on a plane. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, yeah, there. if you go to the airport, if airplane bathroom, it's like going to a hotel. They've got everything you need. Even um, you have, there's a place to dispose of your razor blades. <laughs> no one shaves on an airplane. It's like Teflon knives. Those aren't picked up by the metal and, detectors at all. And then meanwhile, in his, okay, in his cave, Osama's watching, being like, no one will shave on the airplane. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, so it is weird because like- Seinfeld is responsible for 9-11. <laughs> Well, you can't help but watch most things in re in regards to nine eleven, especially on <laughs> this podcast. Yeah, we. I mean, I feel like this might be a phase, you know, as we gather steam, <laughs> as we draw closer to actual nine eleven. You know, we're gonna see what happens with movies. You know, yeah, but you're not gonna you're gonna make that connection when Seinfeld opens with about feeling safe at airports. Yeah. And like if you if you had to ask someone like what was different 20 years ago, they would probably stammer they'd be like, "Uh, airport security was different." <laughs> like that would be the first answer you'd have. Yeah. Um yeah, I guess uh the only other stuff that um I think Seinfeld is like really really big and known for is um his comedian documentary that's going to come out in 3 years after two, uh, 1998. 2001, did you see that? Um, the Space Odyssey? <laughs> no, the comedian documentary that Jerry Seinfeld made. Oh, yeah. Did that what, Did that help you? Uh, did that, was that like, did it help you come to New York at all? Or No. Like, I know that a lot of people like Pete Holmes talk about it all the time. And they're like, oh, that was my calling to New York. No, I watched it when I was like 14. And I was like, I thought it would be a little bit more entertaining. <laughs> it's just some I, you. You want to know what it's like to be a comic? It's just some dude talking about his notebooks. Yeah, but I uh, mean the whole like uh, the whole experience. It seems it rings phony having been here now. You know, there's no you don't get to. I mean, like I get that he was Jerry Seinfeld building back a new hour, but regular people don't just get to bump every single show. And that doesn't relate to us because neither of us work hard at comedy. Right, exactly. <laughs> we're, you, I mean, what, what Orny Adams does is like he gives up his life and he is super sad, you know? Yeah, but he made it. Yeah, I guess he did make it. Yeah, he, he, he makes his living as a comedian. Yeah. Wait, why'd you talk about that movie? Um... I I just felt like that was like a famous Jerry Seinfeld for that time because like he had that three year hiatus so like I feel like that's what comes after this because you know everybody's like what did you do with the old material especially in comedian he was like I burned it I I got rid of it I'm fucking <laughs> I got all my, my furnace <laughs> I got all my friends together and I buried it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, he, uh, yeah, he was like talking about starting over, and it's like a new five minutes. He's like, I'm, I'm like a brand new com. He was like selling himself as like this brand new comedian, and um, 
I wasn't buying it. I'm edgy now. <laughs> yeah, he comes back and tells you ever go to jokes? the grocery store to fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that would be present day Seinfeld, you know, because they have those grocery store mixers and dating swaps. They do. Yeah, there's grocery store dating now in Brooklyn or you know somewhere in Manhattan. Let's go. <laughs> Both of us have uh, the most wonderful ladies. Uh, Shelby Lee Taylor and uh, yeah, but that don't mean we can't get more ladies. <laughs> you you could always have more produce, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, Gabby, this is Minerva. We met by the beans. <laughs> <laughs> I will say for Seinfeld, I thought the Halloween and the supermarket bits were great. They're relevant. They're timeless. Just great observational comedy. Like yep. the experience of buying a Halloween costume to go go that like thirty years back in your life and have yeah. such a, like a detailed in the moment portrayal. It, it was, was like really a, wonderful. The whole like pedophile stuff, get candy, get candy, get candy. And he's like, Come with me in my van, child. He's like, Okay, get candy, get candy, get candy, get candy. It was very like sing songy um performance, you know. And like you could tell like the famous things about Seinfeld were he's a neat freak and he loves Superman and both were present in this. <laughs> and I, I, I thought the line, the joke about the supermarket, it's so true. Everyone walks to into the supermarket with so much purpose. Then once inside, they're like, Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, what else do I have in my notes? Oh, <laughs> the pharmacist bit sucked. Did you have a did you have a different favorite comedian at this time? Like, uh, let's maybe wrap up and uh, around this time. Yeah, I mean Dane Cook maybe. I liked uh, Goat Boy on SNL. <laughs> <laughs> you listen to the Adam Sandler CDs? Yeah, I, I like. I was really formed. I read like Ray Romano's autobiography, <laughs> and I like. <laughs> Go boy on SNL. That's a different style. That's great. Charles Barkley was very funny. <laughs> um, I, I will note that the pharmacist bit really sucked. Yeah. Um, like about the bit about the pharmacist being on a higher level. Yeah, he got an applause break for that, didn't he? Yeah. I got to put pills from this bottle over here to this bottle over here. And you stay down there. <laughs> People Maximum cry. strength. Like. There were just five or six bits that were like you would see from like a first year open micer. But yeah. that might just be because everyone rips off Seinfeld. Right. Like, that was like him hitting it first in the time 20 years ago. And now we just have people copying his <laughs> his entire essence. And like I will say like we're, we're kind of clowning on Seinfeld a little bit. There is some stuff like that we've said that's like been pretty tongue in cheek, I believe. But like it's it's imp- it's hard to watch his stuff because he is so influential. Yeah. Like I'm not going to enjoy his material if it's been influencing comedians that I've been watching for two decades. You exactly. Know? Like there's a, we, we both know that there's like a level of uh, craft that goes into everything that he's doing. And it's not necessarily that we don't like it. You know, it's more that it's just, you're seeing it, you're seeing it being used and in, like borrowed and not even borrowed, but like influencing everything, as you said. Yeah, it's just like a PG version of an act that you would see today. And like with stand up today, it's far more personal, mm-hmm. which Seinfeld will never do. Like, what's he going to, uh, yeah, have you, has anyone here ever dated a 16 year old? Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, could, he could probably get into it if he started talking about his kids. I mean, there's an entire. Yeah, kid, last stage of his life for him to talk about where he could change his act dramatically. Yeah, and that's but, what I feel like you should do if you want to arc your career. Yeah, but I, I, I do believe a stand-up needs to talk about their life honestly. Yeah. And for him to do that, he makes he's been too successful. There's nothing relatable yeah, about him nothing at that time. Push him to even, do that either. Even two decades ago to be relatable, he had to go <laughs> into his past, talk about animals. Talk about stuff that everyone yeah. experiences, which was always kind of his oeuvre. <laughs> Picturing himself in coach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we are like, the. Oh, I'd hate, I'd hate to be on the other side of that curtain. Huh. Yeah. And he does that bit about like what men are really thinking. Nothing. Yeah. 
which like you're a creep though jerry <laughs> going after these young young gals what men are really thinking like i bet i could hit everything in this room with a hammer and no one will be able to stop me <laughs> <laughs> well real men are thinking no, that's just me. Like, what you gotta? Uh, you, gotta you, you can't know. <laughs> you, you gotta have daydreams, though. Like, mine is I'd a. I want to just go berserk in a William Sonoma, <laughs> and see how long it'll take people to stop me. They're just knocking over clothing racks. No, it's and... not. It's like fine china. Oh, it's uh, <laughs> it's winter taffy. Yeah, potpourri. I always wonder, you know, how far you could get, you know, in the outdoor section, you know, just setting up your own <laughs> camp, <laughs> like at a Walmart, like doing... before they stop you. You know, setting up a tent in the aisle. And have you seen like any of those like people that will hollow out a section at Walmart and then they'll like build a fort? It's no. the best. Yeah. I'll show you some photos That's my after dream, this. actually. Yeah. They, um, they like have like a fake um, wall of like product, like, you know, paper towels or something. And then they'll put down plywood and run power and a TV in there. And <laughs> no, they won't. Yeah, they will. There's like huge aisles where they could do like their little uh, Robinson Crusoe type <laughs> fucking uh, forts. It's it's great. like Castaway, but Tom Hanks has like forty volleyballs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Wilsons. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joel, do you have anything uh, you want to wrap up this episode with? Are we done? Yeah, we're uh, we're gonna turn in a fifty minute episode here for this Jerry Seinfeld boy. Um. My notes that I didn't address yet. The yeah. casket joke is great. It is great. I don't remember what it was, but I li- I apparently liked it. That was the one where he's stealing it. And he's like, "Hey, I don't have anything like that in my act." And Jerry's just like, "Get out of here!" No, no, he does some casket joke in the special that's like also good. Oh, that's the one where it's like uh, uh, most people their number one fear is uh, public speaking. Public speaking. Yeah, yeah. The second a- one being death. So are you telling me the person would rather be in the casket than be giving the eulogy? Yeah, so I think this is like 25 minutes of great stand-up, 25 minutes of okay stand-up, and 10 minutes of stand-up about horses. <laughs> so just, just horse for keep, I love it, though. Just for keeping score, the jokes about, about cows are expiration dates... McDonald's dry, burgers. McDonald's burgers and dry cleaning suede. Yeah, I totally forgot about that one. And for horses, there is bits about the oat bag. Yeah. Which is like, that's the funniest line in this special. Which is a good chunk of... Um, <laughs> a horse is just saying, oat bag, oat bag, gotta get my oat. And he also, <laughs> like, I, see, I think we'd have a lot of careful horses out there if they all knew it was the same oat bag. And then he did the one joke. <laughs> he closed up that horse bit by going like, crazy yeah, you glue. know that one horse is like run around? He becomes crazy glue. Crazy glue, yeah. That um, that really did it out for me. I wrote down some of his set list in order. You got old people, get candy, costumes, wait up, supermarket, pharmacy, doctor. The doctor and the pants off. I didn't find that very relevant, you know. Uh, the moon, you know, driving around on the moon. You remember that bit? Uh, McDonald's. Oh, yes. They could take a, a girl around there. Yeah, they get a t- car. Is there a more man idea than to drive on the moon? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, so overall, I mean, great special. I thought it influenced my childhood quite How greatly. did this influence your comedy? You know, um, it influenced it in that uh, I'm very forgettable. <laughs> I uh, Check out the self-esteem on this one. I don't know. Uh, I, I think. Hey, like- Matt, do you have any <laughs> show plugs? Yeah, you can catch me hanging by the neck in my closet. <laughs> Um, I was going to say, uh, I think, I guess it influenced me thinking like, you don't have to be super filthy. Um, you know, I, I, re- I originally liked Dane Cook and Nick Swartzen and like, you know, there's like a shock factor involved. And then like, this kind of shows you, you can really be funny about 
anything and not even swear. I mean, the guy doesn't swear once in... You know, imagine if he peppered in a few fucks here and there. He would he would get a big pop. You ever been to the fucking grocery <laughs> store? <laughs> to fuck? <laughs> Seinfeld with fucks? If you could edit in a fuck uh, version of Seinfeld, I guarantee he'd be the greatest comedian of our time. Yeah, and uh, I think he's probably the second greatest stand-up associated with the show Seinfeld. Yep. Probably first I would go, you know, Michael Richards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would go for the best. Stand- probably the best is the Michael Richards heckler. <laughs> <laughs> you got no movies, no shows, Seinfeld. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Joel, uh, let's wrap this up. Um, say, uh, what did you have anything to plug coming up? Uh, yeah, you can catch me hanging by the neck in my fucking closet. (laughs) (laughs) I'll be doing that after my next round of basketball bets. Oh, yeah. Sorry to hear about that. You can also catch me in the West Village starting this summer because my girlfriend runs my life. (laughs) You've got basketball picks on YouTube, right? Well, you can follow me on Twitter at The Walkowski. You can follow me at Instagram at Joel Wachowski. And I really just tweet about basketball and the dog and my knee surgery. Well, those are three different wonderful things to tweet about. You're seeing Tilly later on this afternoon. My dog is going to be dropped off at the house any minute. I cannot wait. Holding my focus for this podcast was more (laughs) of a chore than usual. Yeah. It's like you had, uh, you had your opiates, uh, derailing your thoughts and Tilly, but Tilly was stronger. Um, she has a very strong pop. So, and then like, uh, you know, I'm at Manderson comedy, uh, Matt Anderson, all things, Instagram and Twitter and stuff. And then to follow the podcast stuff, it's a 20 year old movie for, uh, there's a Twitter and a Facebook. Um, and, uh, let us know that you like the new format with Joel on board. And you probably don't. <laughs> I know there's no way they don't. Um, so we're going to go out on this episode, um, to a video that I hold dear to my heart. Did you think that he could <laughs> dig this set out <laughs> at this point? It's weird. He's getting laughs. <laughs> His LPMs are up. I don't know what's wrong. Here we go. That's how you get back in the man. That was real called for. Wait a minute. He's not going, is he? You're just not funny. That's why you reset. Never had no show. Never had no movie. Son, Bill, not here. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I love that. Hey, I'm just a wash up. Got to stand on the stage. Oh, absolutely. And that's it. We had it. All right. And that's a great place to end the episode. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Bye.